Island hopping is not just for out-of-state tourists. In fact, for those of us who live in Hawaii, visiting another island gives us a chance to become the tourist. For instance, if you are going to visit Molokai, you gotta do the tourist thing and take the drive to Halava Valley. The ride along the shoreline is beautiful. Plus, along the way, you'll find places to stop where it might be the first time for you to see our state bird, the Nene Goose. And when you get to the valley, well, a thousand words won't describe a picture like this. But if you're really serious about seeing this island, you must make every effort to find your way down to Kalau Papa. A short five minute plane ride from Topside offers you a bird's eye view of one of the most scenic and dramatic coastlines anywhere. You are looking at the tallest sea cliffs in the world. This is where the Belgian priest Father Damien lived his life in the service of the Hawaiian people. Kalau Papa's location on this peninsula makes this place as remote as it is beautiful. Hey, how's it, Harry? Hey, how you doing? Aloha, man. Yeah, aloha. Hey, what a privilege it is to, to be here in Kalau Papa, man. A lot of people don't get a chance to see this place. Oh, yeah. I've had a lot of people from Topside who've never even been here before. You mean that close and, and they've never been here, yeah. huh? Yeah. How long have you been here? 18 years. Man, a lot of stories to tell, huh? A lot of stories. That's the reason I wanted to come by. I mean, we want to fish. You know, we like to catch a fish or two. But the most important thing was to take a visit here because so many people haven't had a chance to see it. Will you give me a tour? Sure, I'll give you a tour. Let's go take a look. All right. Okay, first things first. Let's go catch some bait. And I'll bet it won't take too much time or effort to find some here. Our target fish is a juvenile goatfish, which we call owama. You don't need that much gear to enjoy this type of fishing. A small pole, four feet of fishing line with a hook and a split shot weight, plus a scoop net is all you need. Just don't forget to wear good polarized sunglasses. Many of us in Hawaii grew up catching these for both bait and for the dinner table. <laughs> Believe it or not, if you take the time to scale, clean, and deep fry these fish nice and crispy, they taste great. Perfect, perfect. Hey Keith. Yeah. Lots of awama, huh? Uh, a little school here. What are you using for bait? Alka belly. Working good so far, huh? Yeah, uh, they love it. Well, the whole idea is if we catch enough of these, we can go and use them to catch something even bigger, huh? Right. Once you get the knack for hooking these awama, it gets to be real fun. Current fishing regulations allow you to catch 50 of these per person per day. It's a simple activity that everyone enjoys. But remember, if you plan to use your awama for bait, you want to keep them alive in a bait bucket. When it comes time to use them, they work best that way. So let's go test the theory. Let's trade in our small poles for some larger ones and see if we can catch something bigger. And this looks like the place to do it. The idea is this. If we send the live awama with a hook in it out there into the surf, well, something ought to happen. Our timing right now is perfect. Tide's rising, sun's going down, we've got fresh bait, oh, oh yeah, hanapa! Hey guys, we could use some help with the net. Go get him, Keith. Don't let that fish cut the line on those rocks. Hoo -hoo, nice net job. Looks like tonight's menu is going to include fresh papil. And when they're that size, that's when they taste best.
Well, the pressure is off. We could probably stay here until the sun goes down, but Harry has promised to show us more of his favorite fishing spots. So we better get moving before we run out of daylight. Folks, don't go away. When we return, the sights and sounds of fishing fun in Kalaupapa continues right after you catch this.